City Council meeting Monday, June 19th, 2023 to order. The invocation and Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Councilmember Jones. Thank you. <clears throat> Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord, we come before you as a humble people. We ask you to guide our hands in our decision making for the people, property, and finances of this great city. We ask that you look over the first responders as they work to protect our citizens. We ask that you continue looking over our great city as you have for the past 200 years. Amen. Amen. Stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I will now ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Councilmember Jones. Present. Councilmember Perry. Here. Councilmember Reisner. Here. Councilmember Spar. Here. Councilmember Thacker. Here. And Councilmember Wilkins. Here. Uh, let the record show um, all six members of council are present. The first order of business this evening uh, is to swear in our new council member, Chris Monsoor. <laughs> no, don't stand there. I, Christopher G. Monsoor, I, Christopher G. Monsoor, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America, that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America, the Constitution of the State of Ohio, the Constitution of the State of Ohio, and the Charter of the City of Tiffin, and the Charter of the City of Tiffin. I will, in all respects, I will, in all respects, uphold and enforce, uphold and enforce, the general laws of the State of Ohio, the general laws of the State of Ohio, and the Charter and Ordinances of the City of Tiffin. The charter and ordinances in the city of Tiffin. And will faithfully discharge. And will faithfully discharge the duties of first ward council member. Duties of first ward council member. Of the city of Tiffin, Seneca County, Ohio. City of Tiffin, Seneca County, Ohio. Upon which I'm about to enter. About which I'm upon which I'm about to enter. Thank Congratulations. You, All right, thank you. <laughs> All right, congrats, Chris. Thank you. Um, next order of business is our public hearing announcement. So a public hearing with Tiffin City Council will be held Monday, June 19th, 2023 at 7 p.m. in Council Chambers at City Hall for the consideration of the 2024 tax budget. This is proposed ordinance 23-36, ordinance adopting a tax budget for fiscal year 2024. Attached hereto is a part thereof, hereof, and directing <clears throat> the Director of Finance to deliver the budget of the Seneca County Auditor on or before July 20th, 2023, and declaring an emergency. Um, does anyone from the public have any comments regarding this topic? Okay, seeing none, I will close the public hearing at this time. Uh, moving on to minutes, minutes from June 5th, 2023, regular and committee of the whole were distributed. Are there any questions, corrections, deletions? Okay, minutes will stand approved as presented. We are now under committee reports. Finance Committee, Councilmember Reisner. No report, Madam President. Thank you. Long Community Planning, Councilmember Munstor. No report. Thank you. Materials and Equipment, Councilmember Jones. No report at this time, Madam President. Thank you. Personnel and Labor Relations, Councilmember Perry. No report, Madam President. Thank you. Um, Recreation and Public Property, Councilmember Wilkins. No report, Madam President. Thank you. Street, Sidewalks, and Sewers, Councilmember Thacker. No report at this time, Madam President. Thank you. And Economic Development and Downtown Planning, Councilmember Spar. No report at this time, Madam President. Thank you. Does anyone see the need to schedule a committee of the whole meeting? Okay, we are now under reports of the officers, Her Honor Mayor Don Yanatuno. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, good evening, everyone. We do have one proclamation tonight, and this, is, this week is Amateur Radio Week. Whereas amateur radio operators are celebrating more than a century of the miracle of the human voice broadcast over the airwaves, <coughs> and whereas amateur radio has continued to provide a bridge between people, societies, and countries by creating friendships and the sharing of ideas, and whereas amateur radio operators have also provided countless hours of community services both in emergencies and to other local organizations throughout these decades, 
and whereas these amateur radio services are provided wholly uncompensated, and whereas the state also recognizes the services amateur radio operators also provide to our many emergency response organizations, including the Seneca County EMA, FEMA, the American Red Cross, the Salvation Army, healthcare facilities, hospitals and extended care, CERT, the National Weather Service, Skywarn, and others. And whereas these same individuals have further demonstrated their value in public assistance by providing free radio communications for local parades, bikeathons, walkathons, fairs, and other charitable public events. And whereas the city of Tiffin, Ohio recognizes and appreciates, appreciates the diligence of these hams who also serve as weather spotters in the Skywarn program of the National Weather Service. And whereas the American Radio Relay League, ARRL, is the National Association for Amateur Radio, and whereas the ARRL Amateur Radio Field Day exercise will take place June 23rd through the 25th, 2023, and is a 24-hour emergency preparedness exercise and demonstration of the radio amateur skills and readiness to provide self-supporting communications without further infrastructure being required. Therefore, be it resolved, I, Don M. Yanantuno, Mayor of the City of Tiffin, do hereby proclaim June 18th through the 24th, 2023, in the City of Tiffin as Amateur Radio Week on this 24th day of June in the year of our Lord, 2023. And I think there are a bunch of them here tonight. Would you like to say anything? <laughs> Wait a second, we gotta fix this. We're a little <laughs> short on this end. Um, I'm gonna say one thing, and I will tell you at least one of you sitting up there is a ham radio operator. Who is it? John Spar. <laughs> and uh, I gotta tell you, he was at field day a couple of years ago. Got him on the radio to make his first contact, I believe, John, if I'm not that mistaken. That was the first one, yeah. Yep. And uh, the man smiled for like three days. I mean, he was yeah, really happy true. about that. And if any of you wanna see what we really, really do, um, you might want to come out to field day. That's going to be at, help me out, Meadowbrook Park. Meadowbrook Park. There we go. We have a truck coming from Reinecke Ford. Uh, Greg Dell's helping us out with that. <laughs> and we're going to power up a good portion of that exercise with a Ford Lightning truck that uh, Reinecke Ford has been so uh, graciously, uh, you know, given us to use for that for those two days. So... A lot of great things going on um, with ham radio. The Seneca Radio Club is one of the biggest in the state. Um, it's grown tremendously over the last three years. We've got, what, 50 members now? 56, 56 thank you. I can't remember all these things. Um, but uh, 56 members, it's been a great group. If you're interested in the science and the technology and what I sometimes call the black art of ham radio, because you never know what you're going to get when you turn that microphone on, it's an amazing hobby, and it does a lot of good for a lot of people. Whenever there's a huge disaster, the ham radio operators are the first to show up and the last to leave. We really are. So given that, um, I don't know if you have any questions. I have one more thing. I want to thank everyone sitting up here, everyone, for making Tiffin, Ohio a great place to work, to live, and to just do business in. It's a, it's a phenomenal city. And without the hard work of the people in this room right here, including this guy, okay, <laughs> all right, um, I got to tell you, um, it, it just wouldn't be what it is. So you have a lot to be proud of, you know, with what you've done with this city. It's an amazing place. I've lived in a lot of towns, and uh, the, this, this, and I've had businesses in a lot of towns. This is the very best. So thank you so much for that. All right. Thank you, Mike. Any questions? Of course. I have one. Is this around the clock or just 9 to 4 or 9 to 2.30? We're going to set up antennas on Friday evening. I think that starts at? It'll start about 10 in the morning. 10 in the morning. There we go. And we got to be finished by about 4 o'clock, I think, if I'm not mistaken, to stay within the rules. We start, um, we start transmitting at 2 o'clock on Saturday. And, of course, every time we do this, we meet at GW's for breakfast. You probably see us in there once in a while. And that goes for 24 hours. So we're up all night. And the idea with this contest, in essence, this event, is to contact um, all of the 84 different areas of the United States, the Virgin Islands, and Canada. 
if we get that, we'll get a, a clean sweep. And then three years ago, we were third in the state. Uh, and there's these guys down in southern Ohio that are terrible. They're just hard to beat. But we were third. So uh, we're going to try to beat that again. And so it's a 24-hour deal. A lot of fun. John, you going to be there? I'll be there this weekend. Thank yeah. you. You're going to you're going to transmit a little bit and get of it done. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Okay, good. God, I might ask you for one of those. Thank you, guys. Next, I have a special display on loan to me from Mr. Rollins Zimmerman. Rollins is here with us tonight. He has been has entrusted to find the permanent home for this display. It's off to your right in the windowsill. He let me borrow it to share with the third grade students from Kraut School when they toured Tiffin on May 11th and visited my office. I explained to the children that we had a state flower, the scarlet carnation in 1904, the cardinal is the state bird in 1933, and the Buckeye is the state tree in 1953. So to continue this story, in 1965, Ohio Governor James Rhodes wanted to, to make the flint the state gem. At that time, the legislature was against it because they felt you could not make jewelry from it. So he sent out a challenge to gemologists around Ohio to develop a display disproving this belief. Four gemologists presented their displays to the governor. This display that you see here tonight is the original one selected and made by Mr. Harry Sheely from Tiffin. Mr. Sheely's exhibit, Governor Rhodes presented him with a signed and dated copy of the bill that made Flint the state of Ohio gemstone. That bill is in the lower right corner of the display. And so we have Tiffin native that made the gemstone Flint. Rollin, would you like to add anything to this story? <coughs> Uh, I'd probably speak loud enough everybody can hear me. It's the teacher in you. Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> Anyhow, Harry was a very, very private person. He uh, gave the uh, park district uh, his collection of stones, and we exhibited them. Uh, 64 different stones were exhibited in our little tray, and a little bit about each stone. Uh, he was so happy that we did that, because uh, nobody else in Tiffin would accept his uh, collection, that one day, that this is a true story, about six weeks after we exhibited them, uh, he belonged to the Richland County uh, uh, Association that, uh, I can't remember the official name of Rocks and all. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, they told him that they had been, viewed the demonstration at Garl and loved it. And he decided that uh, he was going to give his display. Uh, most of the jewelry he gave to the park district, and it's been uh, exhibited for many years. But he did not originally give us uh, that plaque. Uh, anyway, when I got to his house, he said, and gave me the history of uh, how Flint became the uh, uh, state gem of the state of Ohio. And uh, I wanted him to take a picture with it. He, he very angrily said, no pictures. I don't, I, I never take a picture. I don't want a picture. So after recovering from that negative comment, I replied, the Park District will uh, honor it. Uh, someday put it in some place where it's well protected. He said, I'm not giving it to the Park District. I'm giving it to you because you displayed my rocks. I know you will know where the best place in Seneca County is to exhibit it. Well, I don't. <laughs> uh, and uh, I have been to the county commissioners, uh, and they may, in a new building, have a place to exhibit it. However, since, so only a special group of probably farmers 
go there, and it's not available to the whole city, in my opinion. Uh, the museum wants it, but likewise, I'm, I'm wondering, I think it's so valuable, it ought to be someplace in traffic where it can be seen uh, to, to realize that Seneca County is responsible for this. So uh, I, that's, I give it to Dawn to originally show off in the hopes that she would tell enough people that maybe somebody might come up with uh, either moving it from place to place or a place where third graders could walk by and say, what? Tiffany did that. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Have any Thank you for sharing it with us and sharing it with me and so I could share it with all third graders and Tiffin. I think it's very valuable. Mr. Zimmerman, can I get a picture with you next to the display? Or no pictures? <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it, but I... Yeah, we stuck it down so it wouldn't slide. <clears throat> Does anyone have any questions for Roland while he's he's here? Roland, thank you for sharing that thank with you. us. And Dawn knows my phone number. Somebody got an idea. <laughs> thank you, sir, for coming. Next, we have uh, our own council member, John Sparr, giving us an update of the eclipse happening next year on April 8th in this area. John. Thank you very much, Mayor Don. Um, first, uh, before I get into the eclipse, I'd like to make a comment, um, uh, and uh, Mike Master touched on this with the Aries Group and the ham radio operators. He's not wrong. Uh, they're the first to show up and the last to, uh, to leave uh, if there's any disaster happening. But I have a priority list of, of phone calls that I make if we have a di disaster. That's already named. And the first thing is to call the State Emergency Operations Center and State EMA to let them know we have a situation and they put us on the board down there and that's a first set of communication so I can draw resources from the state. The second phone call I make is to one of the emergency coordinators for the ARIES group um, so that they can come in, get set up and stand by so that we can get emergency communications out to wherever they're needed, whether it's at the scene of the disaster or where, where we have to get somebody out to the hospital, we have to get somebody so we can keep communication that's up. Um, the unpredictability of emergencies uh, means that I don't know where to send them first, but they're coming in and they're my second phone call. That's how, how high of a priority it is to have a group like that available and ready to go. So uh, they, they were absolutely right about that. Okay, so thank you for your, for, for your willingness and time. Um, uh, so getting to the uh, total solar eclipse, it's in less than um, a year. As some of you have heard this presentation before. Some of you have heard it many times. We're going to keep it short. I'm only using a couple slides here. We're going to talk about a couple of things. Uh, April 8th, 2024, that's a Monday. It's going to be um, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and, and we'll have some specific times on this <clears throat> further on. Uh, uh, my, my purpose of having this presentation, and I've given the presentation about 25 times since February, uh, I will give it to anybody I can in any venue and at any meeting. So if you have a club you belong to, a lunch group you belong to, a bridge club, I don't care. I'll come sit in your living room and tell you all about what we're doing about this. My goal is come April... Sixth, I don't want to hear anybody in the county say they didn't know it was happening. And you'd be surprised at how many people don't know anything about it right now. Um, we just don't think that far ahead, I guess. So uh, we have a total solar eclipse. You can change the slide. Uh, what is a total solar eclipse versus an annular, annular, not annual, annular solar eclipse? Total solar eclipse is blocking out the entire sun. An annular eclipse blocks out a majority of the sun, but you get that nice ring around it, and you can see the sun around it with a big black hole right in the middle of it. That's what an annular is. Total solar eclipse is rarer than that, much more rare than that. 
We uh, haven't seen a total solar eclipse in Ohio since 1806. We won't see another one until 2199. This one happens to travel straight through Seneca County. It affects uh, 34 other counties in the uh, uh, northern Ohio. Um, and that number and that idea is important a little bit later on. <clears throat> Go ahead, next slide, please. Uh, the path of totality, like I said, you can see that. Now, the blue line is the center line of this eclipse. And on a further slide, we'll see that it passes right over Bloomville and cuts off the, the bottom, uh, the southeast part of um, Seneca County. But that dark uh, in between, what is that, orange, red? I'll say orange or red lines, all the way up uh, past Toledo and all the way down to um, uh, just, uh, it's right through Delaware County there. That is the viewing area for the totality, which means you'll see the entire sun blocked out by the moon. When you get outside those red lines, you'll see a partial eclipse. So the further away you get from that center line, the, the more and more partial the eclipse becomes. But inside that dark band, that's the totality. So that's interesting enough uh, uh, as, as far as I'm concerned, but it means things for Seneca County. Go ahead, next slide. So that's just a close-up of Seneca County showing the um, uh, center line. Runs right through and over Bloomville. Bloomville Developmental Group out there have been on it. I've given them two presentations this year already to talk to their vendors and the people who live out there. They're ready to throw all kinds of parties out there and be prepared for uh, an influx of people. So that's where we come to the issue. Uh, the issue is, and this is Fairly unpredictable, but based on after-action reports from the 2017 uh, total solar eclipse that traveled through Kentucky and um, Tennessee from, uh, let's say, Oregon all the way down in the path through the, the United States, um, we are to expect an increase in our population that day of three times our population. So we hover around 55,000 people in the, the state of, or in the, the county. And um, we could see anywhere from 150 to 200,000 people in the county that day. Uh, this is a very popular thing. We live, or I should say, 70% of the population of the United States lives within a 24-hour drive of Ohio. Okay, so it's not hard to understand that people are going to say, you know what? It's worth an eight-hour trip to Ohio. Hop in the car, head out on Sunday. We're going to check out this thing we'll, we're not going to see again. And, um, and then we'll just get in the car and go home when it's over. And therein lies the problem, because how do you get, it's easy over the course of three or four days to get 150 to 200,000 people into the county, but when they all want to leave at 3.30 on that Monday, we're going to have an issue. This county is not set up, nor should it be set up, infrastructure, uh, public safety-wise, for um, evacuating, essentially, 100,000 people, okay? Uh, that's what we're working on at the county level right now. Last Monday, we had a um, week ago now, we had a public safety meeting with uh, Nick was there. Um, uh, so the city was represented, the county was represented, law enforcement and the engineers were there to talk about what we can do road-wise, what we can do um, planning-wise to try and help everybody get out of the the out of the county safely, but also take care of our people that live here, okay? In the city, in the county, how do we get fire trucks through blocked roads? Uh, what can the state do to help us with uh, state routes and the U.S. routes to make sure that the hospital isn't cut off from an ambulance coming from downtown out to the hospital? <clears throat> you know, it's entirely possible, and reading the after-action reports and the traffic studies done from uh, in Kentucky, um, that's what happened. Everybody left, pulled on to their four-lane and eight-lane highways to get out, and it just came to a stop. So if somebody spent six hours driving to the eclipse, it took them 18 hours to get home, and they didn't plan for that. So picture going somewhere. It's a six-hour drive. You're going to go to Chicago, let's say. That's five hours. That's about a five-hour drive, but it's going to take you 15 hours to get home, and you don't know that. Did you pack a cooler? Did you bring medicine? Did you? No, you didn't. You didn't do that. But we're going to end up with those people that we're going to have to uh, help because that's our job. 
So that being said, we do have committees being formed and working on those problems to see what we can do. I, um, what I'm not talking about is the positive, which is the economic impact to uh, Seneca County. A lot of people are going to come here, and if we plan this right, and I've turned this over to TSEP and the, uh, the um, uh, Chamber of Commerce and Destination uh, Seneca County, um, to work on the economic portion of it. Businesses here are going to have an opportunity to make a lot of money and showcase what we have here in Seneca County to people who normally might never come here. So let's set them up to come again. Um, so they're working on that part. I turned it over to them in January and I said, I don't want any part of it. I got enough. I got my hands full with public safety planning. So I took it to them. They're working on it. They're going to have a website up, I believe. Um, they're talking to, uh, you know, um, trailer parks and, and campgrounds, et cetera, about advertising that they have spaces or getting some things going. Keeping in mind what the timeline here, April 8th is right. If it's good weather, farmers are wanting to get their, their fields ready and get stuff planted. Early things want to get planted. If it's bad weather, um, you know, we won't know till the week beforehand. We won't know if, our, if uh, the influx of, of the population is going to be less because it's going to be cloudy that day. And that will knock some people off who won't come out here. But other people are still coming. People will still come to see the sky get dark for four minutes, actually three minutes and 52 seconds here in the, in the county. And that will fluctuate a little bit. It really depends on where you're standing as to how long that to totality is. We have an opportunity for great economic uh, um, possibilities here, but we also have a responsibility to our public safety and our citizens and the people who come to visit to get them the best care that we can, uh, all without knowing exactly what our challenges are going to be. So we're planning that. We're working on that. Can I have the next slide, please? Um, here's your timeline. It starts, the eclipse begins, the partial begins 1.57 p.m. And that's, these times are based here in Seneca County. Totality of 311, 24, totality ends 315, 16, partial eclipse ends at 427. Between 315 and 427 is when everybody's going to hop in their car and get back on the road. That's going to be our biggest challenge there till, I'm guessing, my, my estimate is till somewhere around 2 to 3 in the morning uh, before we can really show that... Uh, traffic is moving, and that's based on, like I said, after action reports. I want to point out that the numbers I got for the totality beginning and ending at that second mark is not a guess. That pulled that from NASA. Well, if anybody knows when that's going to happen, it's going to be people at NASA. But this points out something else. If you talk to anybody else in the community, if you take this information and say, hey, I heard about this thing, this this eclipse that's coming, and they suggest to you that, well, it's a little premature. You don't really know what time it's going to happen. Maybe it'll even shift here or there. And, and, and it, the first time I heard somebody say that, I really in my head wanted to go, are you dumb? Um, and then I realized that people just don't understand that this is math. This is science. It's an absolute thing that is calculated which is why they can tell you the time, location of an eclipse in 900 AD, or what do they call it, CE now, uh, and they can tell you that the next one in 2199, and then the one after that is 2444. They know exactly when, where, what the path will be, and how long it will be, because it's all math. This is not supposition, and it's not weather. So that being said, um, this is happening. We're not going to get out of the path of it. And we have a lot of work to do to try and uh, uh, stay on top of it and keep up with it. The more people that know about this and can decide what they're going to do, and I'm talking about your general citizens, uh, the better. You know, um, I'm telling citizens and everybody else and businesses, et cetera, top off your gas tanks the week before. Go to the grocery store the week before. This is not a buy all the toilet paper situation, okay? Um, this is a make sure that you have the things that you would normally be getting that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in, in your normal everyday weekly stuff. Do it the week before, please, because it's likely that we won't have fuel at gas stations until 
Wednesday or Thursday of that week. Everybody who drove here is going to have to fuel up to go home. That's a lot of cars. That's a lot of trucks. That's a lot of vehicles that need to put gas in their tanks. And um, you only have so much, you know, a gas station only has the tanks that they have. And getting a refill in the next day is going to be very difficult with our traffic problems and with the supply of fuel for all 35 counties in northern Ohio that are affected by this. Big box stores, gr grocery stores are not going to stock extra staples. It's a one-day event. They'll suck it up, watch their, their, their um, uh, uh, shelves go dry, and then they'll just get their truck on Friday as usual and stock back up. This is not a crisis situation for them. This is just, hey, we're going to have a really good day of sales, and then we'll, you know. You've been in there when, when there's a whole aisle that's just empty. Something's going on. It's before a holiday weekend, and people stock up on stuff, and it's empty. They don't, they don't prepare over and above that. They just go, sold out. It'll be back on Friday. When the truck gets here, we'll be good. They're going to do the same thing. because It's not economically feasible for them to overstock based on what we think the population might be for one day. Um, that being said, some of our major concerns are how do we get a fire truck to a house on fire when the roads <coughs> blocked shut with people who just stopped to watch the eclipse? Uh, that's a big concern. We are working out how to get a paramedic to somebody who needs some help because they can go in between the traffic on a side-by-side -side or, um, or, or an ATV of some sort while we work an ambulance closer to them. But you can't do that with a firefighter who's going to be able to be effective at a house fire. So we're concerned about that. So our next meeting includes the, uh, all the firefighters, the fire chiefs in the county, and we're going to try and put together some stuff uh, to work on that. That includes the city. All of these meetings include uh, both cities, by the way, in the county. So um, that's the quick portion. This, this presentation is usually an hour, um, so I just gave you the highlights. Uh, uh, but uh, do you, are there any questions from uh, council? Or anybody else, I'll turn it back over. I got a question. Yes. <clears throat> what? Sorry. So what day uh, of the week is April 8th? Monday. Monday. Have you worked with um, the schools to give the kids off that day so yeah, we reduce traffic? Some of the schools um, have already made the change in their calendar, and they're not having school that day. Uh, the superintendents are all being invited to the next meeting, but I've talked to most of them. But there's a process. They did their, Tiffin City Schools did their calendar three years ago. They know what they're doing next year from uh, two years ago, I should say, two years ago. So I'm working with, um, with the uh, superintendent for them to take it to the board to change the calendar officially to not have school that day. Okay. Just seems pretty smart to get the buses off the no, road. That's yeah, right. right. No buses on the road, less traffic, uh, mm -hmm. stuff like that, yeah. Because downtown already gets kind of, you know, hectic with just school traffic. I mean, yep. I can't imagine you throw all this traffic into it, so. Yep, we're working with them, and most of them have already. Uh, Mohawk is off Friday, Monday, and Tuesday. I think they're not having school at all. <clears throat> yep. Yes, thank you. As uh, as council may may recall, um, there was ten thousand dollars that you appropriated um, to Destination Sunkey County, as as John alluded to. Um, that is used for a couple of things. Uh, one of which is to plan ahead. Um, you know, we know that there's going to be people coming here that may sleep in their cars um, over that over that weekend. Um, may you know do some primitive camping, um, and in during the day they probably won't have places to be at. So uh, they are looking at renting some additional porta potties uh, to go around the area. Um, we will not have our parks open for camping. That is not something that we can take in uh, here. So um, our parks won't be used for primitive camping or anything like that, but having a few extra amenities where we can uh, throughout the city is important and they're working with us on getting that done. Additionally, they'll be helping to uh, channel people to some places where they can find recreation, be that uh, restaurants, um, other establishments. Uh, so this is being used to kind of twofold to both showcase our community and to um, provide some amenities um, so that those folks have places to be at. So they can come here early, enjoy their time, enjoy this community, um, and then, uh, and then hopefully um, leave in an orderly fashion. Anything else? Okay, thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thanks. 
Okay, continuing on, uh, updates on our past events. I know I keep saying this one, but I cannot stress this one enough. On May 30th, work began on the Ellis Street Bridge. Ellis Street will be closed to through traffic until the end of November, weather co cooperating, and the East Perry Street full rebuild began also. One lane will be open to traffic, but expect possible timing delays. Other utility projects are going on as well all over Tiffin. Please be patient and allow extra time to navigate around town. Our latest third Thursday event was June 15th with a salute to music. Council Member Vicki Wilkins, would you like to pronounce it correctly? Fête de la musique. And I think you lucked out. Poor Kathy's group did not luck out. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you lucked out on Good. wonderful awesome. attendance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So great job to you and your committee. Thank you. Thank you. And Rumkey's bulk pickup was last week, so don't put anything out now. It was last week, and I was really proud of the citizens as I went around town. They listened and they wrapped their furniture and stuff because usually it's sitting out there getting water and everything else on. It's just nasty for these guys to pick it up. And I noticed almost everything was wrapped, and so really appreciate cooperating. Overall, it went very well. One location was extremely abused. Um, what was supposed to be allowed. And so we had one incident that we're aware of. So good job, Tiffin. Upcoming events before our next meeting on July 3rd, the farmer's markets continue every Saturday on Madison Street. On June 22nd, the Women's Recovery Center open house. It's a new lo location for that. Uh, Saturday, June 24th, Radio Club Field Day at Meadowbrook Park in Bascom. And Family Fest is June 29th from 5 to 7 p.m. on Jefferson Street. And just a reminder that July 4th will be celebrated Tuesday, July 4th at Hedges Boyer Park. Sometimes it's not celebrated on 4th of July. City Hall will be closed that day. And also I've had a request from Brandon Burner from Public Works. If any community, any groups out there need community service hours, please contact Brandon Burner at Public Works. They could use some help with some little projects. And that concludes my report unless there's any questions. Thank you. Any questions from the mayor? Okay, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Clerk of Council and Forrest. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> we have Mayor's request for legislation number 23-29, protection of public trees from mutilation or abuse. Did you have any, did you have a report? That's oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I skipped ahead. That's okay. You're fine. I was surprised I do that have you a had report. a report. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. Okay. Okay. You're throwing me off my game. <laughs> Yeah, I got thrown off. Um, let's see. I do ha have um, a letter that was received from the Seneca County Republican Central Committee dated June 19th, um, advising <coughs> that <coughs> on June 7th, the Central Committee had voted uh, to fill the position of Stephen Seneca County Council Ward 1 um, with Christopher Mansour. Sure. Thank you. We'll be held on file. Thank you. Thanks. And congrats again, Chris. Thank you. Director of Finance, Kathy Kaufman. Thank you, Madam President. I do have the report for, financial report for May 2023. Seats for the month were $4,163,964.01. Total expenses for the month were $3,995,797.16. The general fund's unencumbered balance was $5,328,000. Income tax receipts for May 2023 were $903,642.94. This is a decrease when you compare May 2023 to May 2022, and that was for $200,498.27. And annually, we are currently down in income tax receipts 4.32% year to date. The 0.25% portion of income tax receipts that was transferred into Fund 215 for public streets for May was $106,715.73. The unexpended balance for all funds is $38,401,555.09, which is the same as the bank balances for the same time period. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Questions? Councilmember Reesner. I move to accept the financial finance director's report and uh, bank reconciliation for the month ending May of 2023. Thank you. There's a motion to accept the finance director's report and bank reconciliation for the month of May 2023. Is there a second? Council Member Spar. I second that motion. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, um, 
All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Thank you. And Director of Law, Brent T. Howard. No report, Madam President. Okay, thank you. We are now under written communications. All right. Okay. We have Mayor's request for legislation number 23-29, protection of public trees from mutilation or abuse. Thank you. Mayor's request for legislation number 23-29 will be referred to the Recreation and Public Property Committee. Mayor's request for legis legislation number 23-30, Appointment to Tiffin Municipal Arts Commission of Brad Reese. Mayor's request for legislation number 23-30 will be referred to Personnel and Labor Relations Committee. Mayor's request for legislation number 23-31, appointment to the Seneca County Board of Health of Tracy Citizen Stark. And I apologize, there's an error in the name on Thank you. the agenda. Mayor's request for legislation 23-31 will be referred to Personnel and Labor Relations Committee. Mayor's request for legislation number 23-32, general contractor license. Mayor's request for legislation 23-32 will be referred to the finance committee. Mayor's request for legislation number 23-33, additional lighting on South River Road. Mayor's request for legislation 23-33 will be referred to the street sidewalks and sewers committee. <clears throat> Mayor's request for legislation number 23-34, renewal of school resource officer agreement. Mayor's request for legislation 23-34 will be referred to Personnel and Labor Relations Committee. Finance Director's request for legislation number F23-17 to amend the 2023 <coughs> Budget Ordinance 22-108 to appropriate funds into the Municipal Court Department budget and to create Fund 268. Finance Director's request for legislation F23-17 is prepared for this evening as Ordinance 23-38. And we received a letter um, notification from Columbia Gas about the pipeline replacements on Ann and Han Hancock Streets. Thank you. This notification will be held on file. That concludes written communications. Thank you. We are now under oral communications. Anyone wishing to address council may step to the podium, sign in, and direct their questions to myself. <clears throat> okay. okay. Seeing none, we are now under motions. Councilmember Jones. Oh. I would, where's my notes here? I would move to amend ordinance 23-30 by the changes director Howard presented earlier about the height of the rear lighting on the golf cart ordinance and to add the date of July 5th to take effect if it passes. Thank you. There is a motion to amend ordinance 23-30 for the revised language for inspection regarding the lights um, as well as the effective date of July 5th, 2023. Is there a second for that motion? Councilmember Perry. Yeah, I'll second, Madam President. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Okay, seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on this vote, on this motion, excuse me. Thank you. Councilmember Jones. Yes. Lanzor. Yes. Perry. Yes. Reesner. Yes. Spar. Yes. Thacker. Yes. And Wilkins. Yes. Thank you. Motion uh, carries with a vote of seven to zero. Are there any other motions this evening? Okay. We are now under resolutions and ordinances. We have amended ordinance number 23-30, <clears throat> introduced by Daniel Perry, ordinance enacting chapter 343 of Tiffin codified ordinances, allowing and regulating under speed and utility vehicle use within the city of Tiffin and declaring an emergency. Thank you. This is the third reading of ordinance 23-30. Councilmember Perry. Yeah, thank you, Madam President. I'd like to ask for passage of ordinance 23-30. Thank you. There is a motion for passage of ordinance 23-30. Is there a second, Councilmember Spar? I'll second that motion, Madam President. Thank you. There's a motion uh, for passage and a second. Is there any discussion? Councilmember Thacker. Uh, I would just like to add, when we had talked about this previously, we had talked about potentially adding grab bars, potentially adding a bumper, and I don't think we need to rehash all of this again, but I did do a little bit of research, 
And honestly, if you look it up, it's basically the same setup every time. I don't think we have to specify, you know, it's 30 whatever length or 30 width or whatever. We can, we can choose to do that, but I will be voting no tonight on this ordinance because I think that's a safety measure that we need. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Yes, Mayor. Uh, it's come up, as you all know, I am not for this by any means. And I know it's probably gonna pass. And I just wanna point out that it has come up at several meetings, kind of ha ha, you know, funny about it. But we've already heard that there's golf carts on the streets now. And I just want to point out that there is quite the list that our police department is expecting you to comply to. And you may get pulled over and it's for your own safety to follow this stuff. And so I cannot stress enough to don't go out there joyriding just because you have a golf cart and you think Tiffin has passed it. Yes, we have passed it, but there are restrictions and you need to comply. And so I will. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other discussion? I do. Councilmember Spar. I do have one question, and it might be for Chief Polly at this point. So, how do we determine uh, in the course of this uh, that somebody is or isn't uh, past an inspection? As, as the mayor said, that people are already out there. And, and as I've said, that it's entirely likely that people just get on their golf cart and start riding on <clears throat> the fifth, not listening to the inspection need. Is there, I'll just ask that question, go ahead. Sure, sure. yeah, there's gonna be a process that's put in place. Uh, the first is, uh, I guess, to make an announcement here that it would be best on that July 5th, if that's the date that we're, we're set, to make an appointment for an inspection, because it's probably just gonna be me doing those inspections. Um, and so uh, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need to, to figure out when and, when and where I can do that. Um, so that's the first thing. If, if they pass the inspection, they'll have a copy of that inspection sheet with them that they should keep in their cart or vehicle at all times. They should always have that inspection sheet okay. with them to show that. Um, additionally, I've put the added measure in of, of, want, of putting stickers. We're gonna get some certification or permitted stickers that we're gonna put on the back of everybody's uh, vehicle that has been, that has passed the inspection process. That's gonna make it a little easier for the officers to navigate, be able to, to immediately see whether or not a vehicle has passed an inspection or not by looking at that sticker, very similar to our, our motor vehicles that we drive every day. So those two things should and will be in place uh, before we, we put this whole thing you know, going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? Yes, Councilman Perry. That'd be a dumb question too, but Chief, um, are you going to be doing inspections at people's houses, or are they allowed to bring the cart down to the um, station to get it checked? Yeah, either way, I'm, I'm. I guess I'm trying to make it as convenient as possible. It, it's it's a. Uh, it'd be tough to try and trailer it up and get it here and and do the inspection. If they're able to do that, great. We'll we'll do it that way. But um, no, I'm going to make myself available uh, to to go to their residence conduct the inspection there, um, pass or fail them there, and, and we'll go from there. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other, Council Member Thacker? Um, just a clarification question for you as well. So should people be calling and specifically asking for you, or should they be call like, what's, what does what that process of setting yeah, think, up an appointment look uh, like so, for you? So yeah, um, I think what I'd like to do is probably we'll put something on the website to make an, to, for an appointment name, number, and then I will call them back, or, or my designee will call them back and set the appointment up. Um, so we're probably gonna set something up that way. If they call the police department and I'm available to talk, I certainly will, will speak with them. They can leave a message for me, I'll call them back. Um, the, the truth is I don't think, not going to I don't think I'm gonna be inundated with hundreds of, of these, I think, I'm in the 20s, 30s, 50s area, um, more likely. And so that's doable if I can set times to do that. <clears throat> so that's the main thing. Thank you. Yes. And then I have one more clarifying question for the law director. So in terms of um, this legislation, I know that it's just until the end of the year. We're basically running it under a pilot program. When the time comes, so 
on January 1st, are we going to have to immediately look at this legislation again if we want to pass it, or would we have to start looking at that again in December, or what does that process look like? Lord Director. Yeah, the um, um, legislative process is like any other legislation. So if you want to have um, an uninterrupted um, ability for uh, golf cart owners, then you'll need to introduce legislation in advance. Now you can suspend readings, um, you can have emergency um, clauses that make it effective on, on a particular date, but this is the kind of thing where there's been a lot of public input. I would expect that there would be follow-up input later in the year. So I would think that you'd want to start the process in November so that you can introduce legislation, make changes that you might need, gather public input, and pass it in advance of uh, the first of the year. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, uh, so we will first vote on the emergency for the amended ordinance 2330. Council Member Jones? Yes. Monsoor? Yes. Perry? Yes. Reesner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? No. And Wilkins? Yes. Emergency passes with a vote of six to one. We will now vote on the passage. Councilmember Jones? Yes. Mansoor? Yes. Perry? Yes. Reesner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? No. And Wilkins? Yes. Amended Ordinance 23-30 passes with a vote of six to one. Ordinance number 23-32, introduced by Kevin Reesner, ordinance amending 2023 budget ordinance 22-108 to appropriate a total of $13,827 into the street department budget. Thank you. This is the third reading of ordinance 23-32. Councilmember Reesner. I move for the passage of ordinance 23-32. Thank you. There is a motion for passage of ordinance 23-32. Is there a second? I'll second. Councilmember. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Okay, seeing none, we will now vote on the passage. Councilmember Jones? Yes. Mansoor? Yes. Perry? Yes. Reesner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Tacker? Yes. And Wilkins? Yes. Ordinance 23-32 passed with a vote of 7-0. to zero. Ordinance number 23-34 introduced by Steve Leppard. Ordinance approving the community placemaking grant and the Artistic Development Grant programs to be administered by the Tiffin Municipal Arts Commission. Thank you. This is the third reading of Ordinance 23-34. Councilmember Wilkins. I'd like to ask for Council's passage of Ordinance 23-34. Thank you. There's a motion for passage of Ordinance 23-34. Is there a second? Councilmember Perry. Yeah, I'll second, Madam President. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Okay, we will now vote on the passage. Councilmember Jones. Yes. Mansoor? Yes. Perry? Yes. Reesner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. And Wilkins? Yes. Ordinance 23-34 passes with a vote of 7-0. Ordinance number 23-35 introduced by Kevin Reesner. Ordinance amending the city's credit card policy to increase credit limits and declaring an emergency. This is the third reading of Ordinance 23-35. Uh, Councilmember Reesner. Madam President, I move for the passage of Ordinance 23-35. Thank you. There is a motion for passage of Ordinance 23-35. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, thank you. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Okay, we will first vote on the emergency. Councilmember Jones? Yes. Monsoor? Yes. Perry? Yes. Reesner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. And Wilkins? Yes. Emergency passes with a vote of 7-0. to zero. We'll now vote on the passage. Councilmember Jones? Yes. Monsoor? Yes. Perry? Yes. Reesner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Becker? Yes. And Wilkins? Yes. Ordinance 23-35 passes with a vote of 7-0. to zero. Ordinance number 23-36 introduced by Kevin Reesner. Ordinance adopting a tax budget for fiscal year 2024 attached here to as a part hereof and directing the Director of Finance to deliver the budget to the Seneca County Auditor on or before July 20th, 2023 and declaring an emergency. Thank you. This is the second reading of Ordinance 23-36. Ordinance number 23-38, introduced by Kevin Reesner, Ordinance amending the 2023 budget ordinance number 22-108 to create Fund 268 TFMC Technology Grant Fund, appropriating money in Fund 268 and declaring an emergency. 
Thank you. This is the first reading of Ordinance 23-38. Councilmember Reisner. I move for the immediate passage of Ordinance 23-38, suspending um, City Council's three-reading rule. Thank you. There is a motion for suspension of Council's three-reading rule and immediate passage of Ordinance 23-38. Sir, there a second? Councilmember Thacker. I'll second. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Councilmember Perry. Just, uh, I know I missed the um, committee whole, but if somebody could just quickly uh, explain this, why we're suspending it and what, what's it for? Mary, do you want to go to the Oh, Kathy, thank you. Yeah, this is uh, for a grant, a technology grant that the Tiffin Flustory Municipal Court has gotten. And um, in the grant agreement, it specifies that we need to keep the funds separate. So that's why we're asking to create a new fund. And we've already received the money, so it would be nice to be able to appropriate it for them so they can move forward with their purchases. Awesome. Thank you. Any other discussion? Is seeing none, we'll first vote on the suspension. Councilmember Jones? Yes. Mansour? Yes. Perry? Yes. Reisner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. And Wilkins? Yes. Suspension passes with a vote of 7 to 0. We'll now vote on the emergency. Councilmember Jones? Yes. Mansour? Yes. Perry? Yes. Reisner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. And Wilkins? Yes. Emergency passes with a vote of 7 to 0. We'll now vote on the passage. Councilmember Jones? Yes. Mansour? Yes. Perry? Yes. Reisner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Ordinance 2338 passes with a vote of 7 to 0. That concludes the legislation. Thank you. We are now under other business. Yes, Councilmember Jones. Thank you, Madam President. I was speaking with a resident on 3rd Avenue between Sean Avenue and Wall Street, and they were requesting the city, if you will, take a look and see whether an additional traffic light, street light, would be warranted in that area. Is this the same one that you raised earlier? Correct, okay. yes. So, city administrator, did you say that you were yeah, taking um, it away? I, that may be something that we'll take to the street sidewalk and sewer at the same time as discussed on whether or not to appropriate street lights okay. for the- um, South, uh, South River Road. For South River Road, thank you. Um, if if that's if that's agreeable to you, Council President. Yeah, Cheyenne, is that, or, sorry, Councilmember Becker, is that okay with you to add to the? Yeah, that's fine. But I'd like to add also potential additional lighting on um, Water Street by the viaduct because I've had a lot of concerns from people in that area as well. So street light, Third Avenue, as well as uh, Water Street lighting as well. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, Councilmember Jones? Oh, yes. yes, thank you. <clears throat> Again, on 3rd Avenue, somewhere on 3rd Avenue, I got an email, phone call, picture, et cetera, et cetera, of what someone, in their opinion, was a perpetual ongoing yard sale. And they wanted to know if I would bring it to City Council, see if there's anything in the future we can do to or discontinue week after week after week. Got it. Yes, Councilmember Wilkins. Uh, that'll go to my committee. We'll set a, a date and time to discuss that. Okay. All right. Good. Awesome. Councilmember Wilkins. Uh, so, um, Councilmember Monsor and uh, Councilmember Jones, for recreation and public property, I'd like to set a date for that meeting. Um, I'm looking at either um, this Thursday. Are both of you available at 5 p.m.? This Thursday? This Thursday, June 22nd. 5 p.m.? 5 p.m. Okay. 5 p.m., yeah. Yep, that works. Can you good? Okay. Yes. All right, so... Um, Council President, may yes. I? Okay. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, I'd like to call a uh, recreation public property meeting for Thursday, June 22nd at 5 p.m. in Council Chambers to discuss marriage request for legislation 23-29, as well as the discussion of, uh, regarding the length of yard sales in the city of Tiffin. Thank you. And any other business. Thank you. Councilmember Thacker. Um, on that same note, I'd like to work with scheduling for... Um, all of the ward council members with myself 
for a street sidewalks and sewers meeting. Is there a time that we could meet Thursday? Unfortunately, I, I can't meet otherwise. I just do around the same time. But um, what about... What about the 26th at 5 p.m. or 5.15 to give myself a little cushion? I can't meet until probably 5.45. Okay. What about the 21st, 5.15? No. If, you get, if that works for the rest, I, I can't make that time work. But. Um, what about... I could meet on the 27th earlier in the day if that works for you all. Like, um, I, I can't do 540. I have to do 545 every, every day. Yeah. Okay. Okay, back to the 26th at 545. Is that out or is that too, is that whole day out? Whole day is out. Okay. I'm good. For you? I'm 26th. I'm out. Um, do, 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 should work. Is that on Monday? Okay. okay. Tuesday. Monday, next Monday, right? Next Monday. Yeah, it would be next Monday. Yeah, what that, about that um, that this Friday? Sorry, it seems like we're having bad times. This Friday, 5 o'clock? Yeah. Not for you. We got a ball game that night. <laughs> okay. What's so, did we already turn down the 21st? Because you kind of mentioned that and I didn't hear. I, I can't okay. do the 21st, but okay. if it works for you guys. Is it fine if I have to, before the next you need a quorum, and so if you have a majority, all right, let's then. let's go with the twenty first. I feel like that's going to be the easiest. Five fifteen. Okay. So it's going to be five forty five, doesn't it? Five forty five for Kevin. Is that what you said? Yeah. Is that okay? Unless you want to have it without me. <laughs> I don't. That's Already fine. called it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then I'd like to announce a street sidewalk sewers meeting on June 21st at 545 uh, regarding the mayor's request for legislation 23-33, downspouting legislation, re-looking at that, and any other business that comes before. Oh, I'm sorry. And also lighting. The lighting. Thank you. That we talked about earlier. Street and lighting. And any other yeah. business that comes before council at that time. Thank you. Anything else? Another, yes, Council Member Perry. Okay. Um, first, just wanted to ask the mayor. Um, I see the appointment. Just wondering who um, Tracy is. Never heard of her. Um, and just how the appointment came to be. Uh, Tracy serves now as the chair of the Civil Service Commission. Um, came recommended to me. Various people mentioned her. Actually, she stopped in and saw me after her meeting with the civil service. Very impressed with her knowledge and information and things, and I think she'd do a great job. She is a professor of psychology at Heidelberg, a Tiffin resident. Husband is a minister. Mm -hmm. Help me out. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've known Tracy for several years. She's a really kind and smart person, and she will use reason and, and logic, and she's, she'll work well with anyone. Thank you. Council Member Jones. I wanted the uh, City Council to know that I did my homework. Uh, it came up a while back, and I got some feedback. I'll be glad to share that with Council Member Perry. Do you have any questions about Mr. Reese? Um, I know, I know Brad, he's perfect for this. Uh, um, cut his hair for years and um, yeah. It's important. He, yeah, it is the important <laughs> stuff. Um, no, he, I, I, I know Brad very well. I've just never heard of, uh, of, of Tracy. So um, does she have any kind of uh, resume uh, beyond this or something that? I do not have a forward? resume from her. Okay. Um, I don't know if that's something we could just submit information that of you know about our side be more prepared for our meeting um but rolling into that um are you guys available next week um the 27th and the 28th i'm out you're out unless it's in the morning okay um i could probably make morning work as long as you guys
27th or just the 27th or 28th? I can do the meeting both days. Okay. Or the morning both days, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I guess, Mayor, you know your schedule. Oh, I'm fine until 10 o'clock on the 27th. Until 10? Mm -hmm. You guys just want to do uh, 9? Yeah. Okay. That'd be great. Do 9. So I'll announce a personnel and labor relations meeting on Tuesday, June 27th at 9 a.m. Okay. Discuss okay. the appointment of uh, Brad Reese and Tracy Stark. Um, to the Arts Commission and the Board of Health and any other business to come before the committee. The renewal as well, the 23-34. Oh, yeah, yeah, and the renewal, yep. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Reisner. Um, seeing if the Finance Committee wants to meet after, right after uh, the street, and, street sewers and sidewalks on the 21st, you think maybe 15 minutes for you, and then we do something like at 6 o'clock, maybe? I might need a little more than 15. Okay. A little more than 15. You want to go about? Uh, three items. Might be more likely 6.30. So you want to do 6.15, 6.30? I think 6.15. That gives me a good goal to get it done quickly. Okay. <laughs> I, won't, I won't be there on that day. I'm out of town. Oh, that's... Which is fine if, if you have enough people. Yeah, how many do we have? We got... Is Chris? Or yeah, I'm available. Yep. Okay. And... No, you're not on the committee. Oh. Who else is? I think it's just those, right? I think it's Councilmember Mansour, Thacker, and Spar, isn't it? Yeah. Yep, I think so. Yep. That be majority. Be majority, okay. You, want, you all right with that? Yep, I'm fine. Okay. And that's, okay, I'll go ahead and call a finance committee meeting to discuss mayor's request for legislation 22-32, the general contractor's license um, for 615. June 21st, City uh, the Council Chambers, uh, and any other business that comes before the committee. Yeah. So in other words, I better have my report really small because there's going to be a lot of committee reports on <laughs> July 3rd. <laughs> yeah, apologies for all the committee meetings. You guys, I tried to combine topics, but there were a lot of different ones tonight. So appreciate everybody taking time and accommodating schedules. Is there any other business um, to come before council this evening? Councilmember Thacker. I just have one short thing. Um, just wanted to recognize that it's Juneteenth today, and I think it's important that we celebrate that. I'd like at some point for us, I mean, we have a whole year at this point, but to look at potentially giving that day off to city employees, I know that's been discussed in the past, and I think it's a really important thing that we should follow through with. It has a lot to do with union contracts. Yep. Which are set for the next three years. That's fine. But something to talk about and start discussing. I understand. Any other business to come before council this evening? Okay. Thank you guys for your time. Appreciate it.